Good morning, everybody. Hallelujah. I hope you're glad to be in the house of the Lord today. I know I am. I'm excited to be here. We had a wonderful time in our retreat over the weekend, and uh, it was it's good to be back, though, in a place where we can all uh, come together and praise and worship in freedom this morning. Yes, praise God. I wanted to share just a few minutes with you uh, uh, about these connection cards. And these connection cards, uh, hopefully everyone finds one near their seat. And uh, we ask that you would fill these out. And the reason we do that is because you might not know it, but there's power in these cards. And the power is because they're prayed over, each and every one. Is there anybody here today that does not want prayer? Is there anybody that doesn't want anybody praying for them? Does everybody here want somebody to pray for them? Amen. Me too. I'll take all the prayers I can get. And so the idea is, is if you fill these cards out, whether you're a guest or whether you're a member, whether you've been here for 30 years, it doesn't matter, you fill the card out. And the reason why is because each and every one of these cards goes to our associate pastor, and he goes into his private place, and he reads and prays over each and every one of these. And then whenever he's finished... He hands it off to our pastor, and our pastor does the same thing. He gets in his private place with God, and he reads, and he prays over each and every one of this. And so I would encourage you greatly today to fill out each one of these every single week because I need prayer. We all need prayer, and if we fall under this umbrella of prayer from our church leadership, how many blessings do you think God will pass out? I believe he will. I believe he answers prayer. I've seen him answer prayer right here, and so... I, I believe with my whole heart that he answers prayer. And if you need prayer right now, this altar is already open. It's in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, God. I thank you, God, for saving me, Lord God. I thank you that you have, that you've lifted me up out of the grips of the devil. Lord, that you have brought me up from a place where I was destined for hell. God, I thank you that you have seen me through many trials, many tribulations, God. And God, you, you brought me through those. And God, only to make me stronger. Only to make me, uh, to build my character, God. And, and God, to I, I just pray that you would let this world see Jesus Christ in some of the words I say, in some of the actions that I take. And God, I just pray for this church, Lord. I pray that if there's somebody that came through these doors today, Lord God, and they were looking, they were looking for something, Lord, and, and they were just looking to touch the hem of your garment one time, Lord God. Lord, I just pray that they would they would open up their hearts, Lord, to you as you knock on the door. And God, that they would allow you in. Because God, I know that when our weakness comes out, Lord, your strength shines through. I just know you're my strength, you're my salvation, you're my hope, you're my glory, Lord God, and Lord, I just want to lift you up today, Lord, I want to lift up the name of Jesus, Lord, because I know, I know beyond a shadow of the doubt, Lord God, that you're, you're capable, you're able to see me through anything that I might be faced with, to see us all through anything we might be faced with, and it's in Jesus' name.
Jesus' name. All power in heaven and earth is in the name of Jesus. Another name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved other than the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Genesis chapter 37. Contemplated this quite a bit. I should have my paper out here with me, but of course I don't. Uh, I, we're preaching on gold. This is uh, the last of uh, a series on performance appraisal or evaluation is what it was called in my day. And I used to have to go sit down in front of the man and let him evaluate me. One day we will sit down before God and uh, he will do a performance appraisal and evaluation on us. Um, amen. We will give an account uh, according to the deeds that were done in this body. Um, Scripture says, examine yourself and see whether you be in the faith. Uh, so it's good for us on this side of eternity to go ahead and examine ourselves, see where we're at, uh, make sure, you know, that that we're giving it what we should, uh, serving the Lord, living for God in this world. All things are made by Him. Without Him, there's not anything made that is made. I mean, he created it. He allows us to live in it and uh, enjoy his creation, be part of his creation. Um, and now, if we were sitting here doing your evaluation, I, I want you to think about this. Where do you see yourself in three years? Three years from now, where do you see yourself? Five years from now, where do you see yourself? I mean, you have you have to take thought of this. I mean, because you're you're determining your future. What you're you're doing today is determining your tomorrow. And so you have to ask yourself, where do I see myself in three years? Where do I see myself in five years? Uh, last night, probably about three o'clock, uh, God just wouldn't let me sleep. And I found out a lot of what got me to where I'm preaching and where I'm right here right now today is uh, gold. Gold. I really had never put that together like that until last night. Um, we're going to preach on Joseph, but sometimes we want to judge people where they're at right now. If you walked in the palace and judged Joseph, you would have seen one man. But if you'd seen him years earlier in the pit or in the prison, you would have seen another man. Uh, you can come in here, and there's people coming here and judge me right now by where I'm at today and by who I am. There's been people say that they won't come to this church or they don't want to come because I shout when I preach. <laughs> Man, you ain't never been where I've been. You ain't never been where I've been. <laughs> you ain't. When I, when I was a boy, there was times I would take a bath that I was scared to go under the water. And my mama, she said, don't, don't tell, don't talk about that stuff. She didn't want me to. But, uh, I mean, I'm going to talk about it just a little bit. Because you can judge me from this right here. This, you, you don't even know. Ain't, ain't, it wasn't nobody sitting there to pay my college and get me into school. Ain't, ain't, ain't wasn't nobody there. It was it was me having to do the claw my way out and dig my way out. But I was scared to go under the water because of, of rats in the house. I was scared to go under the water because I was afraid one might run by and fall in there with me. 
I got up on Valentine's Day before to give my mom my card. And she had two black eyes. And I stood there crying, give my mom a card. I stabbed my daddy one time in the head with a hairbrush because he acted like he was beating my mama. And I had seen all that I was going to see. If I could have got to my gun, I'd have shot him. But I wouldn't take time to go get the gun because I wanted him off my mama. And at this time, he was just playing. It wasn't for real. Um, I remember getting up on Easter and a lady taking a little green basket that she put strawberries in. And uh, I had one egg and two pieces of peppermint. And all the other kids running up and down the road, and they got clothes and baskets and all that. And you didn't have nothing. Nothing. Lady down the street made the basket for me. I went to bed at night in my house and opened my eyes up in the morning, and I'd be somewhere else. And I didn't know what had took place during the night. I just knew I got took somewhere, you know. And, uh, but, so, you, you, you can bet, yeah, I'm loud, I'm vocal, I'm passionate about what I do, but you ain't being where I come from. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to tell you, Joseph was who he was because of where he come from. You know, you walk through these doors and you say, well, you know, he could do it this way or he could do it that way or here to do it like this or here to do it like that. You know, the only way I know how to do it is the way God gave it to me. I don't know no other way. I ain't figured out no other way. I'm passionate because of what he brought me out of. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, see, that that's real stuff. You know, we get in church sometimes and we preach and we forget about how, how real it really is. We forget about what people's going through in the world and things like that. And sometimes I look at little kids and uh, and I see them. I see them. I see where they at and I see what they're going through and things like that. A lot of times we don't see it. We don't see them. We don't realize what they're going through. You know. I mean, there's many more things I could tell, but that was just some of the things that were rolling through my head last night at 3 o'clock in the morning about Joseph. I seen Joseph in a, in a different light uh, last night. I'll say this, uh, and I want you to think about this, and I'm just going to throw this in. It probably would have come out somewhere preaching. I don't know, but Joseph never went back. No matter how rich he got, he never went back. He had determined when he left there, he wasn't going back. Because where he wanted to go in life wasn't back there. It never was going to be there. So he determined in himself, I'm not going back there. I remember one time I moved back to the old neighborhood. And it took me from 5 o'clock to 8 o'clock to get from my driveway into the house this morning. Because of the lifestyle. We moved back out of the neighborhood because... Where I wanted to go wasn't back there. It wasn't ever going to be there. And you got to have, you got to set goals ahead of yourself to get where you're going. So that's why I asked, where do you see yourself at in three years? Where do you see yourself out in five years? You, you, you need to set some goals out in front of you. Amen. Uh, they need to be realistic. They need to be a, attainable. Do not be scared to dream. If you can't dream, you can't go anywhere. God can take your dream and make it a reality. But you got to dare to dream. You absolutely have to dare to dream. Uh, just, just some of the things. Uh, uh, let's get it back together here. I already don't have my glasses, so. Uh, Genesis chapter 37. Now, nah, I've done had people offer me glasses, brother. I, I, have to, I have to have my hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, 
Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. There were generations of Jacob and Joseph, and they were 17 years, uh, and Joseph being 17 years old in verse number 2, Genesis chapter number 37, verse number 2. And he fed the flocks with his brethren. and uh, So he was 17 years old. He was 17 years old, 17-year-old boy. He started getting some dreams in his life. He started getting get some uh, uh, goals in his life um, at 17. Um, you need to kind of start figuring out where you want to go, what you want to be in life. Don't keep procrastinating. And some of you, guess what? You ain't 17 now, and you still ain't reached your place. But listen, still start setting some goals out in front of you. Where do I see myself? What am I going to be? What do I desire to be? Uh, and, and I think as we look at this, uh, uh, it said his father's wives, Joseph brought unto his father uh, their evil report. Let's get on back to that. Now, uh, verse number three. Now, Israel loved Joseph more than all his brethren because he was the son of his old age. He made him a coat of many colors. And, uh, and, and let, let me just tell you this. This is just something God showed me a long time ago, something that I like, a coat of many colors. And, and for a coat to be a coat of many colors, it was different fragments of material that had uh, been left over from making clothes and things and different fragments, and it was put together, and it made uh, a, a coat. Uh, uh, and, and a coat is good in the winter, and it's good winter, and it's good in the storm. Amen? Right? Okay. Now, listen. You have many fragments in your life, and you've brought all of these pieces of your life, and you came to God, and He loves you. And he's put these fragments together, and he's made you a coat of many colors. It's good in the winter, and it's good in the storm. It's good when life is tough. It's good when life is rough. Amen. God took your messed up life, your pieces that has broke all apart. He put them together. Amen. Robed you in his righteousness. Amen. When you come to him, because he loves you, your father loves you, and his father loved him and took his fragmented life, amen, and put it together. And that's what I see yeah, even out of myself, my fragmented life, my, my messed up life. God took the pieces of it, uh, how fragmented it was, and he sewed it all together, and he made a good life uh, out of it, you know, amen. But anyway, uh, and when his brethren saw their father loved him more uh, than all his brethren, they hated him, they despised him, they could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it uh, his brethren. Now, now let me tell you something. He had some brethren that despised him. His brothers despised him. And, and listen, and, and you know, he had that lifestyle. He, did, he didn't like that lifestyle. You see what I'm saying? He didn't like his position in life. He didn't like his place in life. He desired something better. And I believe that he had such a desire in him and his thought pattern that when he lay asleep at night, amen, he dreamed a dream. And he dreamed a dream that would take him where he wanted to go, make him who he wanted to be. you got to get sick of where you are and desire to go somewhere else. Amen. I believe his desire, amen, caused him to dream a dream. <laughs> amen. He did, he was not where he wanted to be in life. He's not who he wanted to be in life. And I believe he has such a desire down in there that when he lay at night, amen, God give him a dream. And that dream started setting goals out in front of him. Who could he be? What could he do? Uh, how could he become? I think that's things that started taking place in the mind of Joseph. Amen. Hallelujah. Joseph dreamed a dream. Amen. I wish I could see. Amen. Let, let me tell you something. And I wrote this. Reality, reality. The reality down the road, it began somewhere. Amen. Who I am right now began somewhere a long time ago. Amen. My, amen. Reality began with a dream. Reality began with a dream. <laughs> Amen. My dream became reality. But first you have to dream your dream, baby. Listen, tell every devil in hell, you might, I might not like where I'm at. I might not like who I am. But I'm going to dream a dream. And my dream.
dream's going to become reality. Amen. I'm going to reach for more. I'm going to become more. I'm not going to be who you, 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 you've got me designed and planned out to be somebody else, Satan, but I'm not going to be that person. Amen. But he dreamed a dream. Amen. And uh, reality began with a dream. Amen. And he said unto them, Here I pray you the dream, verse number 6, which I have dreamed. For behold, we are, were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheave arose and stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood around and made obeisance to my sheaf. Amen. They bowed down to his sheaf. And, and, what, and his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us, or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his uh, words. Amen. Let me tell you something. Be careful who you tell your goals to. Everybody don't want you to succeed. Be careful who you tell your goals to. See what they thought was. They said, you're going to, see, they didn't like his words. And after looking at that, I have a little bit better understanding at that. They thought that you're going to obtain your goals at our expense. We're going to have to bow down to you so you can be who you want to be. And see, they don't understand. No, if I ever get blessed, you can go with me. Amen. But see, amen, their own self, uh, uh, selfish desires and their own self-centeredness caused them to think that he was the same guy that they were, but he was not the same guy that they were. Amen. He was going to, he, he wanted more. He desired more. He wasn't satisfied with who he was. Amen. Amen. He said, he, he, they thought that he was going to reach his goals on their expense. Uh, verse number 10, uh, well, he dreamed yet another dream, and he tells the dream again, amen, to his brethren. In verse number 10, and he told it to his father and his brethren, and his father rebuked him for telling his dream. And said unto him, What is this dream that thou dreamest? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come down to bow ourselves uh, to the earth? And his brethren envied him, but his father observed his saying. His father said, So you, me and my wife and all your brethren is going to bow down to you? But his father observed it, but he rebuked him. Why did he rebuke him? I got to wonder why is he rebuking him here? But he's observing it, so he's taking notice. But see, amen, it was a, it was a time, a long time ago, that Jacob, his father, Joseph's father, had a dream. He dreamed that he was going to be God's anointed. He dreamed that he was going to be God's man. He dreamed that the birthright was going to come to him. And he had a brother, Esau, amen. And even when he was a young man, he traded out a bowl of pottage for his birthright. Amen. Listen. Amen. Joseph. Amen. Jacob. Joseph daddy. He said, I'm going to be anointed. If ain't nobody else going to be anointed in this world, I'm going to be blessed. If ain't nobody else going to be blessed. See, you got to have a desire to have it. He had, Even Jacob himself had a desire to be blessed of God. He had a desire to be God's man, amen. He even had to run from Esau because, amen, his mama, amen, made up some pottage, amen. They take it in there. His daddy lays hands on him. He receives the birthright, amen. He, But that was a plan that started a long time back before when he pray, prayed that little bowl, amen, a lentil, amen, to him, a little bowl of soup for him, and he gives up his birthright, amen. He probably started that back out in them teenage years, amen. Amen. He had a desire to be God's man. Amen. And he rebuked him because you can't tell everybody your goals. Everybody don't want to see you succeed. Everybody don't want to see you come out of your house. Amen. And make it and be successful. You think you somebody. You think you all that in a bag of chips. Oh, yeah, baby. I am. I had a desire and I had a dream and it became a reality. Amen. 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 
You ever get tired of who you are? There's a whole lot more you can be. There's a whole lot more you can be. You ain't who God called you to be. Amen. Amen. There's more in you. There's more. There's more beyond. There's more beyond what you are right now. Amen. Absolutely. I believe that about every person sitting in this room. There's more. Amen. To being who you are than what you are sitting right here today. Amen. Hallelujah. Jacob. Amen. Jacob rebuked Joseph because of Esau. He remembered how his brother, uh, how his brother treated him. I mean, hey, man, he traded the birthright out. We made a trade. What you mad for? Why are you chasing me? You traded it out. You counted it as nothing. I mean, you know, I tell a bunch of guys. I could be sitting right here watching you preach. But you know what? You counted it as nothing. And me, I was going to do it or die. Really? I was just going to do it. Amen. Y'all heard me tell stories. I mean, I pulled over on side 85. Hydraulic oil all over. We pulled over. Amen. Changed clothes on side 85 in the emergency lane. To go preach in the rest home. You think there was any glory in that? You think I got any money? No. I didn't get nothing. I was associate pastor in the church for about 12 years. You know how much I got paid? Zero. You know how much work I did? Everything I could do. Because, brother, I wasn't looking where I was at. I was looking at where I was going. You keep looking at where you at, it's going to keep you from where you're going. Where you at will stop you from where you're going. If that's who you think you are, that's who you're going to be. you more than that. you better than that. God loves you. God died from you. God's going to make something out of you. Man, you just got to reach for it. You got to set something out there in front of you. Amen. You can walk in a place like you ain't nobody and he's sitting in the office and he's the big man and all this. Brother, I walk right up in the office and sit down and talk to many a manager just like he was a boy I grew up across the street from. I don't talk to him no different. He only there called God allowed him to be. He dreamed a dream. He dreamed he could be more than he was. It ain't my fault he dreamed a dream. I got to dream my own dream. Ain't nobody going to dream my dream for me. Ain't nobody going to dream your dream for you. You got to dream your dream. Amen. And you got to make your dream a reality. Ain't nobody going to do it for you. Amen. You sit in this world and you keep waiting on a handout, you won't never amount to nothing. Amen. You pull your bootstraps up and you go on and you do what God called you to do. You be who God called you to be. Don't never let nobody tell you you less than. Brother, I serve greater than. Amen. I serve the great I am. Amen. The God of yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Amen. I, I, that's who I serve. That's who you serve. That, that's who will raise you up. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse number 18, Joseph goes looking for his brethren. Amen. And it said, when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, behold, this dreamer cometh. Oh, yeah, that boy thinks he's better than everybody else. Here he comes down the road. That boy that ain't satisfied with who he is. That boy that ain't satisfied with where he is. That lady that ain't satisfied with who she is or where she's at in life. Here she come just walking down the street. Amen. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him. And ca Everybody, your brothers ain't going to take you where you need to be. Amen. Your brothers ain't going to take you where you need to be. God's going to take you where you need to be. Amen. Don't depend on nobody else to make you successful. Be successful all by yourself. Ain't nobody going to get you there. His brothers, amen, what did they say? Let us slay him and cast him into the pit. 
Amen. And we will say some evil beast ha had devoured him, and uh, we shall see what will become of his dreams. <laughs> yeah, you think you're going to be somebody. We're just going to step back and watch. Well, watch my smoke, baby. Watch my smoke. <laughs> Amen. Go on ahead and step back and watch. <laughs> Amen. Because I'm going to do what God called me to do. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to be who God said I am. <laughs> I'm not going to be who you say. I ain't going to be who the neighborhood said I was going to be. Amen. I ain't going to be who the school system said I was going to be. Amen. I'm going to be who God called me out to be. He said, I knew thee before you was formed in your mother's womb. <laughs> Amen. Mm. But God knows who you are. He's the one got a place. Amen. <laughs> Come on. That's why I started out. You don't know my pit. <laughs> Amen. You don't know where I've been in life. <laughs> Amen. They walk through the door. I ain't going to come and hear him preach. All he does is holler. <laughs> yeah, because you don't know where I've been. You don't know my pit. <laughs> Amen. He was sold into slavery to the Midianite caravan as it came by. Amen. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you don't know my poverty. You don't know what poverty I've been in. <laughs> Amen. When we had to make great gravy out of cornmeal. I'm going to tell you, that's like eating grits and gravy at the same time because there ain't nothing in the refrigerator. There ain't nothing in the cabinets. <laughs> Amen. You don't know my poverty, but let me tell you something. My poverty ain't going to hold me back from my dream. <laughs> so don't let your poverty, your place in life. Amen. I just ain't got nobody going to send me to college. I ain't got nobody going to buy me no vehicle. I ain't got, oh, Lord Jesus. Don't let your poverty hold you back. Don't let your position hold you back. My daddy told me, he said, if you graduate, I'll get you a car. I graduated. They was two broke Ford trucks out back. He said, make you one. I drug them both out of the backyard, took them apart, put them together, and rolled down the highway because my poverty wasn't going to determine my position because I had a desire and I dreamed that God was bigger. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's how you got to do it. Put, drag them out there. Hey, put them together. Come on. Amen. The one that had a straight drive in it, amen, seemed to be a better body. But I wanted an automatic. The one beat to death was an automatic. I pulled the engine out of the good one, had it rebuilt. I pulled the automatic transmission out of the beat up one and put it over there and made it an automatic. The beat up one had power steering on it. I snatched it out and put it over on the good body one. Amen. Before long, I was wheeling that baby down the road. Amen. In drive. Didn't worry about it. Took that big old steering wheel off and put me a little one on. Amen. I was, got me a paint job. You know what I'm saying? Amen. I was rolling. Amen. I left a red light right there at the river bridge on Highway 16. There's an overpass. And I up my foot in a carburetor. I was doing 80 going under the underpass, and a state trooper pulled me over. He said, boy, that thing will fly on. I said, yes, sir, it will. Drug it out the backyard and put it together. <laughs> Amen. I'm tired of riding a bicycle. I'm tired of Pat and Turner. Pat my feet and turn the corner. I'm asked a gas pedal now. Hmm. Amen. I mean, really, you, you just got to do it. Amen. See, see, sometimes people don't know your pit. They don't know the place you've been in. They don't know your poverty. But we can't let our poverty, our position in life, determine who we're going to be. That ain't who you got to be. There's too many people says, well, you know, I grew up poor. I never had a chance in life. That, brother, that don't mean nothing. <laughs> Amen. That don't mean nothing. Don't use that as no uh, crutch. Don't use that as no excuse, amen. You go home with God anyway. God is able, amen. If you've seen him in the pit, in the poverty, if you've seen him when he was a slave, you would have think there ain't no way. But, brother, when you walked into the palace and old Joseph had his big long robe on, amen, and walked out and was over everything, mm, amen, why? Because, brother, he would dream. He set goals in his life. Amen. I'm just preaching. I just marked up all kind of places. Ain't no telling where I'm going. Verse, chapter number 39. Amen. Amen. Now, see, I want you to see right here. See, you could say, you could say, now, Joseph could say, you know what? I just wasn't meant for success. I wasn't meant to be successful. 
I'm just going to quit trying. I wasn't meant to be successful. There's no way I'm ever going to be successful. Well, he could have said that. Had plenty of reasons to say that. Amen. Verse uh, 39 and 1. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites. I said Midianites, but the Ishmaelites, okay? Uh, which had brought him down thither. Amen. So now he's sold. He's a slave. He's a slave of the Ishmaelites. And he's sold to Potiphar. He's a slave. Do you think that would be a good time to say, I just wasn't meant to be successful. I ain't never going to be successful. I'm a slave. He watched the money pass hands as it paid for him. Not very likely to be successful. Don't stand much of a chance. Verse number 2. The Lord was with Joseph. 39 and 2. And he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw the Lord was with him. He saw that the Lord was with him. Okay? Okay, you're a Christian too, you know. Huh? I'm a standstill, man. Anyway, he saw that the Lord was with him. And that's good. You're a Christian, man. I'm glad you're a Christian. Amen. But look here. He saw something else, that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. So he saw that he put his hand to something and that he was to work. And when he worked, he was successful in his work. So see, instead of giving up and quitting and saying, I ain't never going to be successful, I'm going to find out what I can do where I'm at in life and how to be successful with what I have to work with. I'm going to be a successful slave. See, too many of us won't set goals out in front of us because where we're at, it's so hard, and I can't make it, and I'm never going to succeed, and I'm never going to be successful. Brother, you work with what God gave you to work with. If God be for you, who can be against you? No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Amen. Take what God's put in your hands. I don't care what it is. If you said, I ain't got two nickels to rub together with all you got's one, amen, put it in your pocket, pray over it, amen, and use it for God. God will bless whatever you put your hand to. Amen. But he kept, kept right on, amen, going, amen, for God. The man seen that he set goals and that he worked. In slavery, he set goals and he worked. He did not let anything else distract him. Of course, Potiphar's wife comes after him. Most of us know that story. Amen. Verse number twenty, chapter thirty-nine. And Joseph took, uh, and Joseph's master took him and put him in a prison. Amen. And placed a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in prison. Amen. Now. Now listen, don't say, that. now he went from being a slave to being a prisoner. Don't let your poverty, amen, make you think that you can't be successful. Amen, that's your pit. Don't let your pit make you think that you can't be successful. Don't let your prison make you think that you don't need to set goals in life and that you can't be successful. Amen, your prison in everything that restricts you. I didn't get to go to college. I didn't have mom and daddy to get me anything. Everything that you feel like's got you bound up where you can't be successful. Amen, don't abandon your goals. See, what happens is sometimes life gets so hard and we abandon our goals. Do not abandon your goals when it gets tough. Don't abandon your goals. That that you had a desire for a long time ago, 17-year-old boy, went to a pit, went to a prison. Don't abandon your goals. Good time to abandon goals right there. Good time to say I cannot be successful. There's no way I'm ever going to make it. I'm never going to amount to nothing. 
Amen. A good time to give up right there. Don't abandon your goals whenever it gets hard. Amen. 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 When a plane leaves from Sydney, Australia, going to Los Angeles, they got the best route planned out. And when they're going that way, if they hit turbulence, they don't, hold on, they, they don't do this. I got to do this. They don't get on there and announce, hey, y'all, we just hit turbulence. We going to go down or we going back? We hit turbulence in life. Facebook, you just don't know how bad it is. Would you please pray for me? I hit turbulence and my life's out of control. Everybody don't need to know your business. I got a destination in a place I'm going. Amen. I might have to drop down in altitude a little bit. Or I might have to raise up. I might might have to shift to the left or to the right. But I got a destination. I got a goal before me, and it's Los Angeles. Amen. I got a goal before me, and it's heaven, and I'm going. Amen. I'm not going to change my goals. I'm not going to shift around. Because life is hard. Because I ended up in a pit and I ended up in a prison. Amen. I'm still going where God said I'm going to go. I'm still going to be who God said I'm going to be. Amen. Because I set goals. Man. Chapter number 40. Man, y'all know. I wake you up at 3 o'clock in the morning. You know you're just going to preach, right? Amen. Amen. And it came to pass, verse chapter 40, verse 1, it came to pass after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker was had offended the Lord, the king of Egypt, and Pharaoh was wroth against his officers against the chief of uh, the butlers and against the chief of the bakers. And he put them in the ward, in the prison, in the house of the captains of the guard and to the prison, the place where Joseph was bound. Verse number five, and they dreamed a dream, both of them. Verse number six, Joseph came in unto them in the morning and looked upon them, and behold, they were sad. So a man that should have given up. A man that should have gave up. Usually it's somebody else. A man in prison. His brother's done betrayed him. Sold him. In poverty, a slave. In prison. No way out. Don't look like you're ever going to be successful. He's still taking notice of somebody else. What's going on with you? told him a dream. He interpreted the dream. He still kept a heart for other people. See, the thing is, life will callous your heart, and it'll cause you to not care about other people and what's going on in their life. Let me tell you something. You can get so callous that you will miss your goal. You can get so callous that you will miss your dream. You can get so hard-hearted you'll miss your place God's got destined for you. He dreams the dream. Let me tell you something. Your brethren ain't going to get you where you want to go. The baker ain't going to get you where you want to go. The butler might be a stepping stone, but they ain't going to get you where you want to go. Verse number 40, chapter 41, and it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, he stood by a river. 
There came up out of the river seven well-favored uh, kinds, fat flesh, and they fed in the meadow, and behold, uh, seven other kind came up after them out of the river, cows, ill-favored, lean flesh, and stood by the other kind at the bank. Pharaoh brought everybody out to try to interpret his dream, and they could not interpret his dream. Amen. The butler said, there's a man down there in the prison that interpret our dreams. Said, you need to go get him. So Pharaoh sent down and got Joseph up out of the prison house. Joseph comes in there, and he tells Pharaoh, amen, he tells Pharaoh that there's going to be seven good years, and there's going to be seven bad years. That's the interpretation of the dream. Now, now let, me, let me go ahead and give you this. Let me give you this. I want you to hear these two quotes here. Plan your work and work your plan. You got to have goals. Plan your work and work your plan. Failing to plan is planning to fail. Failing to plan is planning to fail. He interpreted the dream. That's all Pharaoh wanted to know. He wanted to know what the dream meant. Pharaoh said unto his servants, verse number 38 and chapter number 41. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God had showed thee this, Amen. Hold on. Now, now we got to back up. Verse number three, 33. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. Now, listen. Now, when he's in prison, he's setting these goals out in front of him. When he's dreaming dreams, how am I going to get to where I'm going to be successful? How am I going to get to a successful place? So he says, now let Pharaoh take out a discreet and wise man to set him over the land of Egypt. He didn't say himself. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint him officers over the land and take a fifth part of the land of Egypt in the uh, seven plenteous years and let them gather all the food. So he's laying out goals that you need to achieve. For Egypt to be successful, we got to have goals. Amen. For Pharaoh to be successful, we got to have goals. Amen. For Joseph to be successful, we got to have goals. Amen. In my goals to be successful, amen, there's something I might have to do. I might have to help somebody else achieve their goal. Amen. So Joseph helped Pharaoh achieve his goals. And why he helped Pharaoh achieve his goals, he achieved his own goals. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now, I, I thought what I thought was... I'm going to dream my dream, and I'm going to be who I'm going to be. I remember sitting up under my pastor 13 years. You know what my whole goal was there? To make him successful. It was. My whole goal was to make him successful. And I did everything. I mean, I put roofs on buildings. I mean, insulated walls, hung sheet rock, did floors, preached, went to hospitals, taught Sunday school. I did everything to make him successful. You know what that did to me? Look where I'm at now. That made me successful by making him successful. When I went into the church, we had 20 people. When I left, we had about 150. Amen. But by making him successful is what made me successful. Amen. See, you set your goals, and you work your goals. Amen. He said, look. If we'll take out a fifth part, if we'll build some granaries, if we'll store it up, if you'll find you a man like that, a goal-oriented man, you can be successful. Egypt can be successful. We can all be successful. Set your goals, amen. Plan your work, work your plan. Failing to plan is planning to fail. you got to set goals out before you go after them and be successful. 
He didn't allow his poverty to hold him back when he was in the pit. He didn't allow his prison to hold him back. Couldn't get education, couldn't do whatever. Amen. He still went right up to the top. Right up to the top. He kept working. He kept other people in mind. From the day he was 17, he had a desire, amen, to be up there. Everything in the world was against him getting there. But he had goals. What made him keep going in all this? What kept him from giving up? His goals. His goals. When I lay in bed last night, I thought, what kept me from giving up? It was my goals. I buried two sisters in the early days of this church. I buried my mama. I could have given up and walked away. You know what kept pushing me? My goals. You know what keeps me from walking off right now? My goals. I ain't done yet. I ain't done yet. I'm going to build a building right over here. I'm going to do it. And ain't no devil in hell going to stop me. It might look bad. It might get hard. I might get in some prisons. I might get in some pits. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm gonna, they going to carry me out of here in a box one day. Amen. You know what? I'm going to say, listen, I pushed every day, amen, for my goals that God set for me. When I stood back there under an oak tree and asked God, is this all there is to life? And I was ready to give up. Goals kept pushing. Amen. So you just keep pushing. God will make you successful. Uh, and I want to tell this one little thing, and I'm going to leave. I'm going to quit on that. I'm giving off the call. Me and Brother Ricky went by the house there in West Virginia. I hadn't been there in a long time. I was raised on the back streets. You heard I was scared to take a bath when I was a boy. Hey, man, I looked out that window, and I see the mountains in front of me. And I started crying, talking to Ricky. You know, a lot of times I'm a pretty hard person because of, because of the way I was raised. My wife sometimes tells me, you ain't got no heart. But Man, I cannot believe. I cannot believe what God has done. I still can't believe it. I, I still today cannot believe it. But it's just having goals out in front of you. It's pushing. I can see Joseph standing there in front of his brothers, and his brothers, whenever he hugs them and he reveals himself and he's crying with them, you know, amen, they thought that he was going to get his success at their expense. And he said, no, man, I got my success because I wanted you to be successful too. <laughs> he, they carried his bones back up there, but he never went back up there. What he wanted in life was never up there. He had to go out and forge his way. Amen. And you got to forge your way. You got to get goals before you. And like I said, amen, I had to help my pastor. I'd never been right here. You know how I learned to become a preacher? Sitting under a preacher, doing everything I could for him, hand and foot. I did. Hey Amen. I had goals. I, I'll tell you the truth. I see. I'll tell you. The other pastors might not tell you. I'll tell you. I remember walking down the sidewalk there at that church, thinking, you know, one of these days, I'm gonna be the pastor here. That's what I. Walk down the sidewalk here before. Turn around, look at the building, and say, "Man, I can't believe it, God. You didn't make me the pastor there. You made me the pastor here." But I had to do everything I could to be successful there to get here. It's all about goals. You've got to set goals. Where do you see yourself in three years? Where do you see yourself in five years? Where do you see your children in three years? Where do you see your children in five years? You know why I'm in church? I wanted to see my children somewhere in three years. I needed to see my children somewhere in five years. You know, I'm way down the road. Man, I, it's, it's been up and downs in church. Hey, I'm cool with that. You know what? All the ups and downs has moved my family forward and forward and forward. I'm willing to do it. I got goals set out there. Amen. I'm going to preach again on this tonight. I ain't through. Anyway, amen. If you don't have any goals 
if you haven't even considered this, I ask you to come up here and pray. Because let me tell you, your poverty don't restrict you. It don't. Your education don't restrict you. None. None. I've sat at tables and all of them have doctors. I'm just as annoying as <laughs> Really? It didn't restrict me none. I've sat at tables, guys, that's got doctors, got 80 people in their church. And our church be more successful. And, 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 and it's not, it's not absolutely anything. I, I, I'm as dumb as they come. But it, it's God. It's just giving yourself to God, setting goals, going after what God's put out in front of you, having determination, having the desire, wanting to see your family in a certain place, wanting to see God blessing your family. That's, that's your determination. That's your driving force. That's why you set the goals, because you're going somewhere. We ask you to come in the name of Jesus. Set some goals out there. Be successful in life. Brother Hunter.